Welcome to Play by Play Podcast, your passport to untold stories of the beautiful game. My name is Patrick Bergman. And my name is Ahmed Ehrim. This is where we're going to tell you about all the untold stories of the beautiful game inside the football and outside the football plays abroad and within the UK, within the game and outside the game, including business. Drink the water. Island. Sponsor me. Bro, it blurred. It blurred, you know. <laughs> Sponsor me. <laughs> One it's second, like I need to... Web. It's like need... saying, it doesn't want to sponsor. <laughs> I need Sponsor to... Sponsor me. I need to grab the glass of water as well. One second. So, how are you, Odin? How's life treating you? I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. Right now, I'm just having a regular job. College is done. Playing for Sheffield in third division right now here in Norway. Think about staying here in Norway, not going back to the US. I'm done there. I'm done. Actually, let's take it right back. Yeah. Yeah. Um, tell me the life of growing up as Odin. What was your childhood like? What was it like growing up? Tell us more about yourself. You know, I've been through. I can start with like soccer wise, how it's been. For me playing soccer when I grew up. I mean, I started um playing in Buda, if you guys know where that is here in Norway. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. In, Buda Glimt. Uh, Buda Glimt. I lived in Buda for 12 years. I think I started playing soccer when I was five years old. Then I played for uh, Buda Glimt for until I was like um, 13 years old, I think, at the academy. Uh, you know, I was still uh, very small. Um, yeah, when I grew up, I was kind of um, larger than everybody else or taller, faster, you know, between the age of, yeah, between five to ten. However, after that, everybody started to hit puberty. Everybody started to get bigger, uh, faster, and I couldn't keep up with that. So my career at Bullion ended when I was 13. I was kind of kicked out, out of the academy. Because I was not grown enough, you know. My, I was done with my puberty probably in America when I was when I was like twenty years old. So that was kind of fun. Uh, so I was in Buda, played there for um, yeah, until I was sixteen years old. Then I figured out why not just move down here with my parents because my dad got a new job. So for me, I moved down here, started at the, or at the high school. Yeah, it's high school. I uh, did in here in Little Disturb started to play for uh, Chesmo, that's straight up the road where I live. Um, played there in the fifth division, the fourth division, and before I went to America in, when was that? That was um, 2019. I also played in the third division for Chesmo. I was still not the best. I was still not grown, fully grown up yet. I was still not the fastest kid on the field, you know? And yeah, after that, played in the third division for Chesmo half a year. That's where I met Patrick, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. That was uh, fourth division in Chesmo. Yeah, we played fourth division in Chesmo. Uh, yeah. yeah, I think we also were in the third division for half a year. No, were, no. Were not there? Yeah, no, I went to UK, yeah. Yeah, you went to the UK, yeah, yeah. true. And then, yeah, because I came... Or up to the third division team, the first team at Chesmo when I was um, when uh, when they had zero points after half the season they had zero points I was like oh my god how is this gonna work and then we ended up with like twenty six points I think in the end of the season uh, however we still uh, went down to the fourth division unfortunately and then I was like you know what I need to figure out something my high school career is almost done you know I'm almost graduating from high school. Then I got a message from CSUSA. You guys know about that? Or no. No, it's like a company that helps people to get to America. Okay, and, okay, okay. Uh, yeah. And I was, at Chesmo, I was playing as a defensive midfielder. However, I told them I was going to leave to the United States too early. Basically, I told them in January, I'm going to leave to the United States. And I'm going to leave to the United States in August. However, from then, I didn't get playing time. Because they was like, you're good, but we need to figure out something else to take your position, like a defensive midfield position. And I was like, oh my god! So I was benched for maybe half a year before I went to America. So that was 
that was also mm. kind of weird experience i shouldn't have told that i went to america before i almost left there like probably two three weeks before leaving i should have told my team but uh, that i'm going to the u.s but yeah it was it was a long time ago now though but yeah so uh, when i was like 19 18 i think i got some message from uh, some u.s scout like he was recruiting for the college and i, I was excited i said this to my dad 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 let's do this and he said no he said, have you ever heard about any player coming from U.S. back to Europe and making success? And I said, mm. to be honest, I don't know anyone. So uh, what's your experience? How has U.S. has been treating you? I, I think it's United States has uh, been treating me well. Just also personally, uh, skill-based, not just on the soccer field, just as yeah, a person. Yeah. I, I, build a lot of, uh, I build a lot of confidence. Um, I remember my confidence level was not, was not that high during high school here in Norway. You know, I was not like uh, during one of the popular kids, stuff like that, you know. Uh, I was not, I was very good on the soccer field, but not the best one, you know. i already been kicked out of some of the teams and stuff like that. But uh, I think it's, yeah, it's been a very good journey for me, not just soccer-wise, but also uh, personal-wise. Um, you know, you, you're putting yourself in a position where you have to um, get out of your comfort zone. Represent, you know, you travel into a country totally alone. What is this? How is this? how is? Uh, I had to like put myself in a position where I had to talk with a lot of new people, meet new a lot of new people, something I hadn't experienced before. And you know, you get to a whole different system. How is everything working and yeah, stuff like that? So that was that was a uh, kind of cool. I remember first uh, when I came to America and. Um, I went to a Christian college, right? Uh, a very Christian college. And however, during the, the soccer coaches over my phone, they were like, oh yeah, it's not that Christian. You just need to respect it. It's not like, it's not gonna influence you at all. Then I get uh, to America, to the Christian college in Tennessee, where I was for three years. And it was like, um, you had to go to chapel two times a week. My first semester, I had to have Bible classes. I had like Old Testament my first semester in the United States. I was like, what, what have I put myself into? And then on the soccer field, also after practice, stuff like that, we prayed because it, like the American guys on the team, they were like, like to uh, pray and stuff. But um, yeah, I, the first experience I had in America with soccer, it was um, we played against University of Birmingham, Alabama. That's a D1 college. I was in NAIA, and when we we got to the stadium, it was just so massive, you know. We were like, "Oh my god!" I don't know if you guys want to search it up later. University of uh, Birmingham, Alabama, but it's like a almost like a professional soccer field, like big, big locker room stuff like that. So excited! Yeah, we lost that game, but however, we I thought the experience is gonna be so so good after that. But then I went back to the NAIA and started to play against like the teams. I'm played against in my um, division and it was like bad locker rooms bad fields uh, not cut grass fields so that was not a good experience um, but as you guys know I was in NAIA I was not in D1 however the level there is, is it was kind of good you have teams that's really bad but you also have teams that's really good because it's combined by a lot of international players, a lot of people coming from academies, back from Spain, Italy, Argentina, Mexico, stuff like that. So my team consists of, yeah, I was the only Norwegian. We have Swedish guys, German guys, guys from Spain. And that was kind of cool because I was just used to the Norwegian playing style. You know, it's kind of rough. Uh, we don't play that, play that much on the field or we usually uh, pass long ball stuff like that and now I play with people that is very technical very good skilled fast paced stuff like that so that was that was really fun and as I said <laughs> um, you have yeah bad quality teams some games was like we won 11-0 right and it was just like alright and some games we won we won like yeah, or it was very uh, high intensity games with a uh, very good players and they had tough games because the level is so different from game to game there in America. And luckily, I also had I also had uh, international coaches 
one were from England and one was from Scotland because my experience I had during my college career, I had one American coach and he was not really that good. And that was for my last one and a half years when I went to Georgia Gwinnett College. And <laughs> as you know, American coaches, they don't really know about soccer. They don't. They just like to pass long balls and hope for the best. There's yeah, they're stressed when you play out from the behind, you know. They just like get the ball to the center back and play it uh fast play it forward. And I was like, oh my god, this is this is not working. Because I'm a guy that likes to uh, play out from the back as a midfielder. I like to receive the ball in the mid and then play out to the winger or up to the striker and get it back and uh yeah, so that was that was also a different experience from Norway. Yeah. What would you say? Um the difference in like levels wise in terms of between Norway and America and um what would you think that needs to be improved in terms of pathways in America for it to kinda give you a better experience? Or was it more to do with just the you choosing Tennessee and as a Christian college type of thing? Yeah, okay. I th- um I think it has a lot to do with what teams you're choosing. Mm. Um, first of all, when I went to America, I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know what, what my team was going to be like. It was not the best team. We were like, uh, when I came there, we were like in the middle of the table. Um, not the best teams in the country. Um, yeah, everything in America is all about business. You need to understand what schools are good, what soccer teams are good, what coaches are good. Uh, you can't just choose a soccer team because I know a lot of guys from Norway have went to America, been there for two, three months, and they quit. They can't do it anymore because it's so bad. Not just soccer wise, but school wise, they can't. They can't handle it. It's uh, um. So you need to do your research, understand what team you're going to. Um, what I would recommend is you go either a good D1 team. I know a lot of Norwegian guys also that went to good D1 teams uh, because it's high level uh, on the soccer field. Or you need to go good level D2 teams or good level NAIA teams. Because in America, like what division you are in, if you are in D1, D2 or NAIA, I don't consider D3 because I don't like that league and you don't get the uh, athletic scholarship at all for soccer. But uh, the top teams in every division is very good. Like uh, I was in NAIA. We could have easily beaten um, maybe not the top 20 teams in D1, like the top division in the college in the United States, D1. Um, but um, we could easily beat D1 teams teams around in the United States because the level is not that good if you're not a top 20 team in the country. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so yeah, what I would say is you need to do your research first. You should get a good amount of offers. You need to talk with the coaches, have a better understanding. You need to see where they have been through the years. Um, uh, soccer wise, for example, us, where I was at Milligan the first three years, we were a middle division team, like in the middle of the division. And then COVID hit, and then we played us up to the top 15 teams in the country, right? Because, uh, yeah, you had a national system where you, for the first part of the semester or the season, you play against team in your league. And these people are can be very bad teams to the top uh, three, four teams. That is kind of good. They're fighting for a position to go to the nationals. And uh, the nationals, you have the best, yeah, 32 to 64 teams in the country. And we did that our second year. We fought our way to the national champions or the national, uh, it's, it's called um, yeah, the national championship. And we came on, yeah, we finished 15th place and stuff like that. And if you are a player from Norway considering going to America, you should focus on these teams that's going to national championship kind of every single year if you want to have a fine, high quality football team. So the pathway would be say, if you do, let's say you do um, the nationals or the playoffs or something like that, 
is it more highly chances for you to get drafted or stuff like that? Uh, what's the kind of opportunity pathway over there if players are looking to say they've done their research, they've done to find out this team goes to the nationals most years, go to the playoffs. Is there like a pathway for them to kind of progress higher, potentially go to a NISA league or USL League Two or a USL League One potentially? Yeah, if you, if yeah, because you have to kind of go to the national to be recognized in America. Mm -hmm. Um, if you don't do that, you're not going to be recognized at all. And in nationals, because it's a tournament, it's like a, um, it's like a regular tournament for thing. For example, think about the uh, Norwegian Cup, like uh, here in Norway, the Norwegian Cup. You play um seven games before you may may win the win the whole tournament. Um, but other teams like the MLS teams or US USL teams will see you if you get to like the first or second place in the nationals, and you may get an offer because I know for my last one and a half years when I played at Georgia Gwinnett College, I had a guy called uh, Karim Tamimi. He's from France. Um, he is now playing for Atlanta United too. That's kind of, yeah, that's high level. It's not Atlanta United 1, but he's now playing for Atlanta United 2 at like the big Mercedes-Benz Stadium, stuff like that. And he's traveling all around the country right now. Um, but he's like 27, 28 years old. So he was like actually in his prime when he's got his offer. But uh, he didn't get recognized through just college soccer but he got some agents and contacts. You need to kind of find contacts in America, some agents or mm. something like that to go to the next level, to be seen. Because he found some contacts in Atlanta United that saw him, and then they figure out he did. He played such a high level and was so good that uh, when his college career was done, he actually got an offer for Atlanta United too. And I also know a guy from Milligan University where I played for three years. The first school I was, it's a guy called Iñaki Moreno from Spain. He's also got some kind of agents back home in Spain, you know, recognize him. Uh, and he is going to go pro when his college career is done uh, now in May. So, yeah, you need to kind of find some other people outside uh, that can help you. So... They can they can show your college highlight clips to another club, to MLS club, to a USL club, to hopefully go pro. Okay. Yeah. Or I, what I think when you play, for example, D1, the highest league or NCAA that is called in uh, America, you get streamed. You go on ESPN um, when your games is played, and during the national championship, you probably have like maybe 20,000 people watching your games. So if you're a top, if you're a top 20, uh, if you're a top 20 school and you won, you may also be recognized just over TV and that's how you may be uh, drafted for the future. But then you also need to be smart and get to the good schools and also perform well on the soccer field to get recognized, maybe get drafted. Because I haven't been, I haven't talked with the guys Norwegian guys, I haven't been talking to them that has been drafted yet and how they their journey to be in the MLS was, but that's what I think it was. They just played really well and they get rec recognized on ESPN during the national championship and then MLS teams pick it up and they get chosen for the draft. Get drafted to MLS. So that's kind of that's kind of cool. Mm -hmm. So you gotta know how to maneuver about basically. <laughs> and you're kind of on your own. And you need to do your own research. Yeah. You and nothing is free in America. You need to put yourself in a position where people want you, or you need to reach out to people, and you need to build contacts and stuff to go pro in America. This episode is sponsored by Craft Magic Gallery. What's Craft Magic Gallery? It's the merchandise of Bergman Art. And what's Bergman Art? Bergman Art is an online gallery where Patrick, the co-host of Play by Play podcast, enables people to buy the outstanding paintings by his grandfather. Like this one. Go to sigurbergman.com and enjoy the show. Now, let's go back to the episode. Okay, so I have a different kind of question. So, uh, you moved to America. It's like 10 hours, 12 hours from Norway. How much is it? 
Oh, like, uh, for my first school, I had to travel. Yeah. For, I had to travel for twenty four hours just to get to campus. <laughs> yeah, it was three flights. It was first to, for example, Heathrow in England. Then I flew to Atlanta, Georgia. Then yeah. I had to take another flight to Tennessee. That was called Tri Cities, and that took twenty four hours. That was uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so my question is, uh, you moved to a completely different world, let's say. And how do you establish yourself in the new environment? Like, what do you do? Because obviously, you go there, you don't know anyone. As you said, mm -hmm. you did not know anyone. So how do you get into these social circles and uh, and just just transition your life from Norway to to uh, USA? To USA. Okay, first of all, I think you need to be very open-minded say yes to every opportunity just if people ask whatever person on campus asks you you want to go out and eat you want to uh, you want to go and study together where i would just say yes just say yes to everything i think that's very smart if you say no they're not going to contact you anymore and you're not going to meet new people however as an athlete it was way easier than a regular person that goes to college without doing any sports because when i get to america i get to a soccer team that has already 50 players you know we're already a team of 50 players uh, when i from the first day i get there and you meet them in the locker, locker room you say hi and you're together almost every single day and for me it was very easy to like make friends do social stuff because there's so many people around me that i already knew from the start and the coach is also very open-minded they they want to they want you to be included in the team, stuff like that. But for say, for example, <clears throat> I went to America now without <clears throat> going to a soccer team, without having the 50 people behind my back from day one. That would be a higher struggle because then I need to talk with people in my classroom. I need to start just, hey, you go around campus where people are and just be like, yo, you want to go, you want to go and eat or whatever. And that's more... That would take more time, but I was lucky um, as an athlete to just have 50 friends straight away. But yeah, it was, it was also hard because you're used to an environment back here in Norway. You're kind of comfortable, you know, you, but now you're living in a small dorm room with another guy. That was kind of like, okay, is this how it's going to be, you know, sharing one bathroom with four people and stuff like that. So that was kind of hard in the start but you get kind of used to it so it's just how you are as a person how open-minded you are and you should be open-minded and put yourself out of the comfort zone and that's uh yeah and i know a lot of people like in college americans they they're very different from us here in norway because here in norway you can go on the bus and it's weird if somebody sits beside you you know on the bus you know that's norwegian <laughs> culture you don't talk to anybody on the bus but in america everybody starts to talk to you like how was your day how are you who are you so that's that's very nice in that culture i really i really enjoy that and they start to ask about your family and like just being friends and it's, it's very easy to get in friends in america because okay, they're okay. very up there. yeah mm, interesting so like you mentioned bus and uh i wonder if you took any any bus tours any flight tours have you visited uh, a bit uh, usa or what's your experience i've almost been all around the east east side of america like if you cut uh, america in half i've almost been all every state in uh, east america because we have yeah you play one home game and then you travel for another game right the next week and we had i've traveled to Kentucky, Georgia, North, South Carolina, Florida, uh, Alabama, Iowa, Chicago, you, you name it. I've been almost everywhere. Um, because when you go for away games, you may sit on the bus for seven hours just to go get to one game and then travel back straight after the game. I have just been on one flight because we had two games up in Iowa. You guys know where Iowa is? No, it's kind of it's kind of high up north in America, kind of far away from Georgia where I was at the time. So we kind of um, had to take a bus to the um, 
we had to take a bus to the Atlanta International Airport, and then we flew to Chicago. And from Chicago, we had to take a four-hour bus ride to Iowa. But that was really fun, you know, all the guys, 25, 30 guys traveling together. It was really amazing. And also the bus trips throughout the years was also really amazing. You know, we bring a speaker, we bring a microphone, we always laugh, have jokes in the bus, you know, new guys singing and stuff like that. It's just, a, it's just a really good vibe. It's just a really good vibe. I know, I know, I know. I'm sorry for breaking the podcast. Just one announcement, okay? Check out our channels on Instagram, on TikTok, on Facebook, Play by Play Podcast. But it was What's awesome. your favorite experience? What's your favorite like moment? What's your favorite oh, uh, match or your favorite away game that, that sticks out for you the most? And why? Yeah. So, um, sorry. <laughs> I think that game was against Okay, so I played at Milligan for three years, right? Then, after three years, I transferred to Georgia Gwinnett College. However, my second year at Milligan, I've been in America for two years, we played against Georgia Gwinnett College, where I transferred to later. Mm -hmm. And during that game, this was during COVID, right? It was, this was in, uh, I think it was March 2021 during covid was still going on and this was the first game and first time milligan had been in the national championship for several years a lot of years so this was really big for us you know we finally went to the national championship um however two weeks before the game i got covid right and i was like oh god i'm not really allowed to play this game so I remember my coaches were all around calling NAIA, calling everything, they, or did everything they could for me to play that game. And finally, I was allowed to travel to that game against Georgia Gwinnett College. Um, and during that game, we were, um, we were, uh, I think they were leading like 2-0 or 2-1. Then I came in in the half, like uh, in for I came in for the second half because I I had COVID. I hadn't practiced for like two weeks straight. However, I came in the second half. Somehow I managed to score on the corner. So it was so the game was two two. Right now the game was two two. and went to overtime, and overtime in America is basically a golden goal, right? And then like when it was like five minutes left of the game, the ball came out. Uh, we had a lo long throw in. The ball came out from a mid uh, from a central defender, headed it out, and I was there on top of the box, like twenty five meters from the goal, just fully volleyed, volleyed top uh, in the top left corner of the goal, and we won the game. And everybody was just like <laughs> celebrating, wild. Victor Castile finishing on a nice through ball. There's a shot off the volley, and it's in. Milligan marches on! Because it's like golden goal and first national championship game we played in a long time, so that was very fun. It was definitely <laughs> nice to send that clip to us, definitely. Yeah, I think Patrick has seen it. It's on my TikTok account or something like that. But I can say, yeah, I can yeah. say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Afterwards, it's really, mm. it, it was wild. But I also, favorite moments, I think that's also been like all the spring breaks, if you think like socially. One week, every single year, you go on the college spring break. That was wild. Like eight, nine of the guys, you either go to Fort Lauderdale, Miami, Cancun in Mexico, Panama City. It's just wild. That's the college experience outside of the athletic park. That was crazy. So that's the best week of the year. It was definitely spring break. <laughs> Yeah. So it often lives up to the hype of what you see on YouTube and social media and all. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's just like the movies, you know. <laughs> just <laughs> like it's wild. Mm, yeah. But I wonder if there are any false beliefs about USA, like if there is anything presented to the public that is really not true when it comes to USA. What would you say? That it's very good to go to college. That is very profitable is very good for you however uh 
yeah, I think the college experience is great, stuff like that. But I think college is just a business. From my standpoint, college is just a business. They want to take the money from you. They have a budget. They try to like you. They don't want you to talk with other people regarding money, stuff like that. I was so surprised. It was one time I talked with my coach. I was like, or I had talked with some other teammates regarding how much scholarship they got, stuff like that. And the coach got so mad. You can't talk about that. That's just private between me, you and your family, stuff like that. And I was like, this is just pure bullshit. Because everything in college is about money. Everything from books, how much you pay in scholarship, how much scholarships you get, stuff like that. So what I will also recommend for people, if they think about going to America, be very focused mind about dealing with money, negotiation, stuff like that. I thought I had a really good scholarship when I went to America. Like I had, I thought I like, oh my God, I get so much money from the school. Like I, all, I still paid the school, but I thought this is going to be great. However, after some years, I figured out I pay way, way too much. This is wild. I'm getting scammed there, basically. Um, and also, like, from my first year, I, I was the coaches came to me. Oh, we're going to give you $2,000 more in scholarship. I was like, oh, my God, that's going to help me so much. However, the inflation of how much does a school in America cost went up $2,000. So basically, I just got $25, $25 more, I figured it out from year one to year two. But I was still so happy, but I figured out like a year later that I got scammed, you see? So every, people think college is like, nice, yeah, it's profitable, it's very nice, you don't need to pay that much, oh, you need to pay so much money and they're gonna have fees on everything and stuff like that. And it's, yeah. So I recommend that to everybody going to America. You need to focus on being good at negotiation. Maybe don't take the first deal, just, yeah. You need, to, yeah, you need to be good at talking with people, not just the school, but the coaches and negotiate a better price for everything. Mm, interesting, interesting. So uh, <laughs> we have four minutes left. Uh, tell us about your future plans, what Odin wants to achieve the next few years. <laughs> what I want to achieve? I think I'm lucky after being in America for four and a half years. I have... I think I have other experience and skills. People in Norway that has regular studied here in Norway don't really have. Uh, first of all, I've been very good at uh, very good at uh, negotiation skills. I've been good at um, I've been good at uh, communicating with people, presenting, talking with people. I'm very like uh, I've been very good at uh, communicating. Yeah. So my future plans is first of all now find a new job here in Norway and hopefully find a company where I can help them expand internationally. That's kind of my, my goal. I want to work for a company where, um, where um, it's a domestic country, company here in Norway that I can help get internationally. If that's another business or it's my own business, I also want to do some entrepreneurship. I haven't really figured out what I want to start yet, but it's kind of my mindset to be an entrepreneur in the future. But also, I'm also now going to see how soccer goes in Norway. As you know, I started for playing for Sheffield in third division. I will see how this season goes. Hopefully, very good and see if I can take my soccer career to the next level. But then I also need to perform on the soccer field. So that's going to be very interesting. But yeah, my future plans, you know, I need to save up to get a... Save up to get an apartment, car, stuff like that. Find a very good job, profitable job, and play soccer on the side and see where everything goes. I'm not like, I don't need to have my future figure it out. I take one day, one step at a time, and I think that's really good a mindset to have. I don't have anything like large to work to work, uh, yeah, to work towards, basically, yeah. All right. Last question, okay. Uh, what would you tell your seven-year-old self? Uh, do you have any regrets? Um, would you have done anything different? Mm, yeah, I regret that I didn't do an internship in America over a summer. Uh, I was, uh, unfortunately, I was in America during COVID, so I had to go back home to Norway, see my family, stuff like that. But I regret not spending a summer in America working for a company. As an internship, 
that I think that would be great on my resume and I will probably learn a lot of more skills on how business in America works. Um, but I didn't really do that because I didn't have like a car in America. So was, I couldn't travel from my apartment to work, stuff like that. And it would, would be complicated to get an internship. But yeah, if I would go back and start all over again, I would take a summer where I did not go back home to Norway and instead stay over the summer and work for a company. That would be, that would be smart. Just for the experience and have more on my resume. Well, Odin, yeah. it was a pleasure to have you on the podcast and uh, hopefully we can catch up uh, in a few months about how what's going on. Of course, so, of course. Uh, it was nice being on the podcast. I like it. It's a pleasure um, having you. Okay, you learned a lot. Got to always be open-minded as always. Um, always say yes. That's what I've learned. Be so, yeah. open-minded. Um, and always do your due diligence in terms of looking into things rather than going into blindly and obviously and setting expectations and stuff like that. So that's one thing that I've learned. You always got to um, planification, do do your due diligence, go, go look, go for that extra detail uh, because it will pay off and uh, work in your favour. So yeah. uh, um, I'll take that on board, definitely. Perfect, perfect. I was glad for being on this podcast and it was really nice, really nice. Nice yeah. to talk about. Well, thank you for coming in. Okay. Nice to have you. And hopefully you hear some good news both in your business and the football. And football career, career yeah. Football yeah. Career. Keep on playing. Keep on yeah. playing. You never know. I can't stop it, unfortunately. I can't stop. Still need to play. <laughs> exactly. Why would you stop? So yeah. You play so many years. So. Wow. That was an episode. If you want to see more, check out this one.